Georgia Southern by the name of Chaz Williams. Williams versus Williams today. Chaz Williams is a different cat. He, he likes to run the option. He's a leading rusher in the Southern Conference, a leader of this team offensively. Defensively, Nigel Rogers, a terrific story, the young man who's in charge of defensive things with App State. He's a red shirt, sixth year eligibility. He had two major knee injuries. He got medical red shirts. He's the leader of the defense. He's the kind of the grandfather of this team. And for Georgia Southern, Derek Butler. Derek Butler anchors that 4-3 defense. He's uh, had three sacks, one interception, the second uh, leading tackler on the team. He moves well. Good speed, good, good, uh, tough defensive player. The third member of our crew today, Ted Byrne. We're patrolling the sidelines with these insights before the game kicks off. Ted. All right, Warren, as you mentioned, both these teams without a loss in the conference. Appalachian has one more loss than does Georgia Southern. Statistically, as you look at these two teams here, how they rank up. Points per game. Appalachian is averaging 31.7, while Georgia Southern averaging 51.2. For points allowed, 31.8 Appalachian, only 18.7 for Georgia Southern. On the ground, the Eagles are getting 484, while Appalachian just getting 382. Should be a great game, Warren. Hope you'll stick around, folks. Live from Paulson Stadium here in Statesboro, Georgia. We're about ready to kick it off. Georgia Southern at home against App State. CSS Game of the Week coming up right after this. Georgia Southern, after losing their very first game of the year to Georgia, Georgia, they've now run off five consecutive wins, and man, are they rolling offensively. We'll develop that story as the game goes on before a homecoming crowd here at Paulson Stadium. Our coaches this afternoon for Jerry Moore there in his 14 winning seasons in his 16th year, the winningest coach in Southern Conference history. It goes without question, he's the winningest coach at the school. Jerry Moore comes in, and he has become the Dean of Conference coaches here in the Southern Conference. Across the way, Mike Seawalk, just in his third year, but what he would like to see hanging from that pole down to our left is another national championship banner. They've got six down there right now, just kind of briskly blowing in the breeze. And this team, I believe, privately, you hear the whisperings around town here in Statesboro as we've been here the last day or so, they believe there is something great in store for this Georgia Southern squad. Yes, they lost the opening game this year to Georgia. They have yet now to, though, be the only team that has scored 28 points against Georgia. What App State comes in, though, here, Walt Nadzak, is a phenomenal victory over Furman last week, which was then ranked number two. 9-9-1 nine, nine overall this series. How even could it be? ASU, though, has had problems in this particular area. They've not won at Paulson Stadium since 96. We're about ready to kick it off, and Walt, we set it up in the beginning. App State last week with a phenomenal victory over Furman. Warren, they've come a long way since that opener at Wyoming when Coach Moore said that our players thought they went out there for a rodeo instead of a football game. Well, they know how to play football now. They've really improved. This, this should be a great contest. App State's going to put it on the tee with Julian Roush, a freshman. He transferred from East Carolina, and Georgia Southern's going to get the ball first, and that's exactly how they like it right here in Statesboro because they have the ability to march that ball down the field. Man, they have just always seemed to have the ground game here, Walt, through the years. Well, they've always had a great rushing attack. They run that option out of a double slot. Uh, Paul Johnson's running at Navy, and before him, they ran it down here. They, they're not going to scrap that. This crowd's used to seeing those big option plays. We'll keep our eyes on Georgia Southern. Now, we mentioned the two Williams at quarterback on both sides. Here's the opening kickoff, and it sails deep into the end zone and beyond as Georgia Southern will watch that ball sail into the uh, back fence and head on to the 20-yard line for their first possession. There's a, a pretty good wind blowing that direction, Warren. Starting lineup here for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Offensive line there anchored by the center, Lance Wayne, even though Lance Wayne himself is a sophomore. He's got some experience, and Chad Moat also leaned on heavily there, uh, and we'll tell you why uh, a little bit later. Otherwise, on the offense, you'll have to keep in mind Chaz Williams, who definitely is a guy that will make things happen out of that backfield. First and 10, Georgia Southern gets its first possession. 
Little give up to the fullback in the very beginning there, and Jermaine Austin's name is a name we'll hear called very often throughout the day. The Southern Conference Player of the Year back in 2003. The year before that, in 2002, Chaz Williams was the Conference Player of the Year. You know, last year, Appalachian State shut Georgia Southern down in the second half. They played good assignment football. Somebody's got the fullback, the quarterback, the pitch man. When they have nose trouble and try to uh, act on their own and don't play the team defense, that's when they get hurt. Small game here. Williams brings them back up to the line. Yeah. Around the left side. Watch it, number 26. Get to the outside there for Georgia Southern. And, man, is that a nice move by Marquise Maynard. Appalachian's contain broke down out here on the right side. Pretty it's good little, sailing there. It's a little reverse from the wing back on the right, coming back uh, into the split inside to the wide side of the field here. First down, Georgia Southern. As advertised, they are already marching downfield. The defense for App State, linebackers West, Carter, and Mayfield. And the uh, defensive secondary will be tested as well. We'll kind of highlight those guys. There's Austin again up the middle. He's only played six quarters this year because of some injuries and also as a sus and also a suspension earlier this week where Coach Seawalk just sat him down. We'll look at the defense uh, also as uh, we continue to chart things here early going as we get you ready. Linebackers are West, Carter, and Mayfield for App State. Georgia Southern showed a little uh, different offensive set. They had a tight end in that last alignment. Williams keeping there himself and picks up a couple. He had the pitch right there, uh, Warren, but I think he thought he could make the first down. Williams has had a couple of huge games already this year, and it's kind of a, a comeback season for him as uh, he had a phenomenal year just a couple of years ago as a sophomore. And then injuries last year caused him to miss three games. He's been called by a couple of members in that team as the heart and soul of this squad. And they're now sitting with a third and short here just across midfield. Uh, look, Appalachian's got uh, 11 people up near the line of scrimmage. Williams keeps it, gets the first down at about the 45-yard line. They're pressuring that inside war, and they're trying to get gap control on that offense, and uh, that's what they stopped them with last year. They're, con they're trying to control the gaps. I mentioned that Georgia Southern scored 28 to open the season and a loss to Georgia. They're averaging 51 a game right now as they continue to lead the country, Division I and Division I AA, in scoring. First and 10 now from the 45. Williams comes around. There's a pitch. The ball's loose, but it is picked back up there by number 26, Marquise Maynard. They might be calling that a forward uh, a forward pass on that pitch. It almost looks like Maynard kind of got himself in his timing and his distance from the quarterback. They called that an incomplete pass. I'm sure that was a forward pitch. There so, was no place to go out there, Warren. That was, uh, that was bottled up. So Georgia Southern avoids what could have been a very costly miscue there near midfield. And it'll be second and 10 from, uh, we'll call it the 45-yard line. They ran that into the boundary and ran out of room. In motion goes Cantrell. And then the give back the other way. T.J. Anderson That's from Lithonia, Georgia, gets the call. It's the same play they ran a few plays ago to get the first down initially. They really come at you in a lot of different ways. They've had six different guys this year rush for 100 yards. They spread it around, don't they? The difference is App State spreads it around throwing it. We're going to definitely see two different uh, approaches to trying to get the ball in the end zone this afternoon. So far, the opening minutes have been Georgia Southern's ball as they've marched it from their own 20 and now are inside the 40-yard line. Third down, about four to go. Austin trying to pick his way. He gets first down yardage and a little bit more. He's brought down at the 30-yard line. Another little misdirection play inside. Man, he's quick hitting that hole. And the sticks move again. Jerome Touchstone on hand there from his corner position to try to bring him down. Here's Austin. They pulled that right guard and led, he led number 64, led through the hole and got a great block. First down inside the 30 now, Georgia Southern marching as they have since they received the opening kickoff. If you've just joined us from around the southeast, App State trying to give Georgia Southern its first 
conference loss this year. App State has not lost in the conference either, coming off a huge victory over Furman, who was then ranked number two in the country last week this time. Well, obviously their philosophy is to run the uh, option into the, the short side of the field because they must count numbers and Appalachian must have more numbers to the wide side. But there's no place to run on that. That's twice now they've been bottled up out here. I will see if I put the ball in the air, Roar. Second and nine. You've yet to throw a pass unless you count, the, I guess, that incomplete toss that was actually ruled a forward pass there. But in terms of the more conventional drop back, they're going to give it right to Austin again. And he's corralled near the 25. I believe there's a face mask in there. I don't see a flag any no. place, but uh, I'd like to see the replay of that one. Yeah, Austin's head did look like it might have been pulled back there about the 25. No flag, though, thrown on the play. See right there, 95 maybe kind of getting his hand oh, yeah. on the uh, Omar Byra, but no call there. Well, I think it was inadvertent. It would only been a five-yard penalty, but it would have been a key first down. I think Georgia Southern's in uh, four-down territory here. They're, if they get close, they'll, they'll go for They're it. They're not afraid to do that. Third and five is where we stand now at about the 25. Here comes yet another little toss to the outside, and that again okay. is number 26. There. Make that 28, Marquise Maynard. This is the first key decision right here, Warren. It's, it looks like fourth down and a long two. Well, they've been uh, very successful, like 79%. They've gone for it on fourth down this year 14 times and converted 11 of them. Well, the kicking has been a little erratic, though, from that distance. I think that's uh, the key to this. Fourth and two at the 22. Georgia Southern with Chaz Williams sets them down. Well, Appalachian's got nine guys in the box. Williams back to pass, looking, and all alone, I mean, he is going to waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. I believe he went down the block and just hesitated for a minute and got lost in the shuffle and then broke outside. When Appalachian put nine guys in the box, there was no way they could cover deep. Georgia Southern to Eric Hadley, and that is a touchdown for the Eagles. Warren, that's a classic wishbone pass play. I mean. This uh, tight end gets lost in the shuffle. Wide open doesn't even begin to express exactly how available he was. And Georgia Southern strikes first. 7-0, the Eagles grabbing the opening lead. You know, the key to this, they've run a lot of time off that clock. They've had it the first five minutes, essentially, and we will take a break with App State looking to get its first possession. You're watching CSS, your source for sports, back in just a moment. Eric Hadley's first catch of his career. You're saying, wait a minute. I kind of follow Georgia Southern football. Isn't he a defensive player? Well, you know what? When I saw him go into the end zone myself, I'm saying, wait a minute. The notes I took had him playing defensive tackle. It's the first catch of his career, and it goes for a touchdown there as they went for it on fourth and a couple. So the leading scoring team in all of college football at 51 a game marches down in its opening possession, 12 plays, 80 yards in the first 443. And now App State will get a chance to touch the ball for the first time this afternoon. You know, he's wearing a tight end number, and uh, he outgrew being an end. They put him a tackle on defense. Well, you know, he hasn't even done anything all afternoon on the defensive side, but he's got something to talk about and walk about all night long. Here's App State with a nice return from the very opening moment here by Lewis Barr. Uh, make that, uh, check that on that. Dexter Jackson with that. Let me set uh, Georgia Southern's defense for you. McBride, Young, Muhammad, and Barr in the defensive secondary for the Eagles. And they will be really tested this afternoon because of Richie Williams' ability to put this ball in the air. You're going to watch no huddle all afternoon. It's the way they do it. We'll talk about how they get the plays into the offensive set in a bit. Many times they won't put anybody in the backfield, but they are spread. And the give is initially to Allen Atwater, who takes it right up as a sophomore out of Middlesex, North Carolina, for a short game. He was their leading rusher last year. Uh, now the key is whether whether Georgia Southern can keep track of Falks out there. He's, he's got 50 passes this year. 
We'll keep our eyes on not only Atwater, but also number 22, Devon Folks. Here's Williams looking near first down territory. And the pass intended for Victor Chavis incomplete. The App State offense, Bettis, Oliver, Brown, Suttle, and Grawl along that offensive line. Third and about seven for App State on their first possession this afternoon. Big possession play. Spread formation again. And here comes pressure. Oh, is he going to rule it incomplete? Oh, yes, he does. It's a great hit, but... <laughs> Victor Chavis, intended receiver, last week, Williams was able to complete at one point, 28 in a row. He's missed his first two this afternoon, and Georgia Southern holds on its first defensive stop. App State will have to punt it away. Terrence McMurray made a great hit there, Warren, knocked that ball loose. He put his hat on the ball. Wes Herlocker back to kick inside his 20. Left-footed kick, kind of turning end over end, received at about the 20-yard line. Had the benefit of a lot of wind behind that punt as well. Georgia Southern's going to take over. Their second possession of the afternoon, the first one was pretty successful. We'll take a quick break here from Statesboro. Georgia, everybody, not just a uh, slight zephyr blowing here this afternoon. This wind's pretty <laughs> stiff. And it's essentially, as we look at the field of play right now, it's in the face of the direction that Georgia Southern is driving. Uh, it could have also, I think, impacted maybe the throwing opportunities that App State had when it was behind them. Here's Chaz Williams bringing him down again. Look at for room on the outside. Hey, they got a great block out there at a wide receiver coming back toward the ball. Kevin Davis does get it around that right side for a nice game. The early momentum is clearly in Georgia Southern's favor right now. They were a little concerned in that offensive line earlier this week because Paul Collins went down, lost to injury, done for the year. He was hurt last year, and uh, they've had to reshuffle some things there, and they were a little concerned just how effective that offensive line would be today. Talked with Coach Seawack yesterday. He was really worried about that and how that was going to work out. There's the fullback. Uh, again, Jermaine Austin, who gets a uh, slight gain, and that was on second and one as they tried to convert, and they're not going to come up with that on this play. I will tell you, Chaz Williams did get his ninth TD pass of the season this past uh, time, and you'll see that offensive uh, problems that they're doing with the middle there. Carter leading the way there for App State. Well, it looks like Appalachians made the decision to stop Jermaine Austin. They've bottled him up inside pretty well so far, but they've left those corners pretty vulnerable. Well, he's averaging about 10 a game, and Williams is going to keep it himself this time, and does appear he's got enough for the first down. No, Appalachian defense, they're just daring you to throw the football. They're daring you to throw it. They're, they're all up on the line of scrimmage. The two uh, corners are only three yards off the ball. Well, they dared him in that first drive, and uh, what a conversion it was. Well, they better not do a double dare because they're in real trouble here. First and 10 now, ball at the 42. Well, let's mark that. Yeah, let's say uh, 42, 43 maybe. Williams looking to be outside and gets the pitch. Pitch good there to T.J. Anderson. He gets good yardage around that right side once again. You know, Appalachian's got two uh, what I would call rookie cornerbacks, and they're having trouble with the blockers of the, the wideouts of Georgia Southern doing a great job of containing those those corners and getting in their, in their numbers and, and holding them up so they can't penetrate to the pitch. Second and short. This is pretty ideal here for the way Georgia Southern likes to grind it out, and uh, they can really put some offensive numbers on the board as they have through their first six games. Again, right up the middle. It's an inside counter. Uh, I think they were anticipating quarterback sneak there, frankly. Is it enough for the first down, the though? And Georgia Southern, as they did first in their down. last drive, going 12 plays with 80 yards, gets another first down. And App State is going to have some trouble here if they can't. Uh, they're not going to have the ability to score if they continue to keep this defense on the field as much as they have. I don't want to dwell on a time of possession, but it's, uh, it's huge right mm -hmm. now. App State's only possession to this point in the first quarter, three and out. Oh, what Another a great pitch. block on the corner out there. 
Lynn Lanon Jefferson, redshirt freshman, getting the uh, carry this time. And you'll see just how many different pieces to this puzzle there are for this Georgia Southern offense. They execute extremely well. I'd hate, and Chaz, his, his pitches are sharp. All the running back pieces seem to be so interchangeable, too, Walt. Uh, it just really they doesn't are. matter who gets it next. They're just all running backs. <laughs> Second and five. Ball at the 41 now of App State. There's a toss, swing out. toss sweep to the wide side here. They're having trouble getting outside to this side. Uh, Appalachian's defending this side of the field very well. Here's how this looks along the sideline camera view. Kevin Davis right, just yeah. kind of tucking it under there and just moving to the outside before he's wrestled to the ground. Makes it third and three, ball at the 38. Jeremy Wiggins is the, probably the best defensive back for Appalachian State. He made a nice play there. He was being blocked. He still forced the play. Third and three. It's the first time any school's ever had two previous conference players of the year coming back. 2002 player of the year, their quarterback, Chaz Williams. 2003 player of the year, Jermaine Austin. What an advantage that, that is, awesome? huh? <laughs> We're going to take a quick break here, see if he's Saturday afternoon in Statesboro. Folks with uh, quilts and blankets uh, pulling up there. Um, forget all the box seats that might be available. Uh, these folks kind of enjoy just sitting out, enjoying a very, very pleasant Saturday afternoon here in October. A very important early first quarter moment here in this game as it's third and two at the 38. Williams trapped in his own backfield and dropped for a loss. He never put the ball on the fullback's hip there to, to, to get any, uh, to draw the defense and freeze them. He didn't freeze them at all. Omar Byram leading that charge there. Along with a little help there from Joe Suter. And I think uh, Georgia Southern's going to go for this. Fourth down, they were uh, successful, and they have been all year long at this point. Uh, fourth and two. This is fourth and a couple. Ball about where it was originally spotted at the 38. Williams changing the signal there at the line. Looking down the line here. Outside, does he get it enough? I think he got it. He crossed that chalk. He's... Like Coach Seawax is going to be a riverboat gambler here. Mark Quiz Maynard gets it outside there. I'm sorry, I, guess... I thought it was Mark Quiz, but I'm afraid it wasn't. It was not 28, it was 26. And that's uh, that's not Marquise. I've called his name a couple times. That's T.J. Anderson. First down, nonetheless, for Georgia Southern here, and they're marching. They keep the drive away. The, the line, the ball's at the 35. Oh, the ball's loose. And again, bounces back it. into a Georgia Southern's arms. Man, that's a couple of times they've had a problem on that left side. And that time it was Marquise Maynard who just couldn't bring it in. Well, Georgia Southern's been pretty stubborn. They're still trying to run into the boundary over here on the short side, and they're running right at their best defensive back, Jeremy Wiggins. And they haven't blocked him too successfully so far. App State's offense has had the ball one time now as we approach the five-minute mark of the first quarter. Second and 12, ball now marked at the 37. Williams back for another pass. He looks right down the middle and wide open inside the five-yard line. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Two passes, two touchdowns by Chaz Williams, and that now is his 10th touchdown pass of the season. They ran a, scene, ran a flag post and beat the defensive secondary to the inside. Jason Foster at about the four-yard line brings it in and then takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. You now we talked about Nigel uh, Rogers uh, pregame, but that's who got beat on that play. Point after is good, and Georgia Southern now has had the ball twice and on both long possessions have come up with touchdown passes. We talked about how effective Chaz Williams has been throwing the ball. 
He's, you talk about getting the most for your money. That's now 10 touchdowns for the year, and that eclipses his career high that he set back in 2002. Let me tell you that you can catch fan favorite talking sports with Danny Sheridan live tomorrow at 8 Eastern and CSS for an hour of debate and discussion about college football, along with some interviews with top college coaches. Don't miss Sheridan fielding calls and questions from viewers throughout the region. Catch talking sports tomorrow at 8 only on CSS. So Foster into the end zone with a touchdown. The redshirt freshman out of Canton, Georgia. Warren, this is supposed to be the other way around. Appalachian's supposed to be thrown for the touchdown passes. Georgia Southern's supposed to be running the ball in the end zone. Well, if App State comes out and starts really running the ball oh, now, then we've got oh, a, yeah. a, some real issues. going to mess up all of our notes. <laughs> the first drive lasted 12 plays. This one, 11 plays. Covering 69 yards. We'll get down to Ted Byrne here in a minute to get some of his impressions from this opening quarter of play. App State has only touched the ball once, and that was on a three and out. Last week, they trailed at halftime to Furman before really finding uh, some solutions to things. A short squibber here is going to be fielded inside the 20-yard line as App State oh. is met. Oh, very harshly there at about the 27. I think they tried to squib kick that because of the wind. That's uh, When he kicked it high, there's too much uh, chance of a uh, return. Is that an offside back there? No, there isn't. What a great hit. So Jerry Moore's squad is going to get their second possession of the ball game, and they'll get pretty good field position at about the 27-yard line. I think we'll see the ball in the air now because they've got, still got the wind at their back, and they, and they think they can throw it deep. And uh, But I, I think the ball sails when that wind's at your back as heavy as that wind's blowing right now. Richie Williams named to about half a dozen different National Division I AA Player of the Week publications this past week after his performance against Furman. Here he is on the run. And maybe a one-yard gain. I don't think that was a broken play. I think that was a called play. It's like a quarterback draw. Stop made by Eric McIntyre. And you'll see number 98 there, who's kind of a defensive captain along the way as well. He caught the first pass for a touchdown for Georgia Southern early in this game. Second and nine. We have four wide receivers out here. And George Southern's going to come after him. Here they come. Quick pass outside, and it's in the hands of Hans Bashan. The and timing the of that play down. is excellent. Terrific run after the catch as well. He threw under a lot of pressure. They were right in his face. I think we're going to see more of that now. They've decided they're not going to be able to run the ball. First down for App State. They're near the midfield. This is their furthest penetration of the afternoon. Williams back, looking long, can't find anything, breaks out of the pocket, still wants to find a receiver, and nearly has it intercepted there. As coming up with the nice defensive play is number two, Lewis Bach. I thought he should have thrown that one out of bounds deliberately. He, that was close. He looked like he might have been trying to throw it away, but he didn't throw it far enough away. <laughs> You know, the college rule is a little different than the pro. you got to get outside the tackle box, and you have to throw it past the line of scrimmage to, to do an, uh, a grounding of the ball without being a penalty. Second and 10 now, still at the 48. Williams looking for the signals from the sideline. He had him open there across the middle there, but could get yeah, a little bit behind uh, the intended receiver. I think you see a little bit there of that wind affecting that ball. It sailed on him. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, in golf, you'd like the wind you to like be with wind. you as much, but uh, it really does affect the way the ball comes out the of the way my hand. game's going, I need all the wind behind me on a golf course that I can get. Third and ten, the only look one at, in the backfield is, look, at this uh, look how wide this spread is. I'm take a little gap control here. You don't see that much of spread on a buffet on Sunday afternoon after Lord church. going to have to lock up man to man. Maybe that's what they're trying to get him to do. Everybody says, I got him, I got him. Williams looking. There's still coverage downfield. He's trying to float it outside and does get it into the arms of Lewis Barr. Well, it sure gave him a lot of room to maneuver back here because they cut down the, the Georgia Southern people in the gaps and, and left the wide open for a run pass. I don't know if I've ever seen the gaps that wide as they set that offensive formation. I don't care who's playing in the secondary. 
to cover a receiver that long in a wide open field mm -hmm. with five of them out there running around. Somebody's going to be open if you have time to throw it. All right, Dexter Jackson with that reception. They snuff out this running play, though. It's another design quarterback uh, keeper. Well, they're showing a lot of stuff. I don't think Appalachian's out of this game, Warren. Well, their ability to score, I mean, they're averaging 31, but they also give up about the same amount yeah. as they score. So uh, that's the biggest issue. The one thing that they can do by maintaining possession is it keeps Georgia Southern from marching with the ball. Well, and this is giving their defense a rest. The defense has been on the field the whole first quarter. A little shotgun formation. Second and 11. Williams complete. Near the first down, maybe doesn't quite get it, but it is complete into the hands of Zach Johnson out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I think there was a mix up in coverage there. Well, you can kind of understand why there is a mix up from time to time. You got so many guys coming at you out there. You can't cover that receiver with an inside linebacker. That's asking an awful lot. Stop made by John Mooring, their leader tackle, tackler. We've got a third and one at the 15. And one of the few times quarterback's gone under center. Atwater with the call and may have gotten the first down. Uh, I'm not seeing any indication of that. As a matter of fact, They're right now I'm seeing, uh, yeah, fourth down. So we'll see if they decide to go for it. Like Georgia Southern has done twice already in this game. I know Coach Moore, he's going to go for it. He's got, he's got a player down out there for Appalachian. Can't get the number. Official number timeout at the moment. Back on the on the field as Jerry Moore says, well, I've well, seen them go for it a couple of times. They're going for it as well. well Fourth well, and one. Not wasting any time. They tried to draw them offside. They're just going to play and go for it. Officials have to have a little conference here. I don't the clock says 158. I think you just want to make sure they get all the different uh, numbers coordinated here. Fourth down. Okay. Fourth and one. A chance for App State to maintain its possession here on this, their second possession of the uh, first quarter. Atwater's in the backfield. Yep. Williams talking to the lineman along the way. Solid formation, two tight ends. He's going to pass. And he's overthrowing outside. I don't know if that was a planned play or just something they saw when they got up at the uh, line of scrimmage and decided to go to it. But Daniel Bettis had no chance to bring that one in. And it's going to be a uh, surrender of possession there for the Mountaineers. That's a real gamble. I don't think the quarterback, uh, I, I don't think uh, Williams is happy with that call. Boy, Eric White was giving all kind of pressure there in that backfield there as well for Georgia Southern. And he just kind of had looked like a heat-seeking missile headed the way there of Williams. And it's going to be Georgia Southern's ball now at the 16. What you and I don't know is with Wh whether Williams changed the play. Right. He might have seen something out there he thought could score and, and uh, took a chance. Georgia Southern back with the offensive side of things now as they hold strong at their end. Still not got about four yards on that to Austin up over right guard. They've got to run him in there enough for him to keep those linebackers so they can get outside. And that's that's the whole purpose of pounding it inside. We've probably had five different guys at this point run the ball from different points of this backfield. And we'll see where they go this time as Williams bring them to the line, second and seven. Now we go to the outside, and around that side is Lenon Jefferson. Well, now let me tell you what Appalachian's done. They gave up on their two corner presses. They went to a three deep there. They had a middle safety, which they haven't had because they got burned with the pass. And now they were weak on a the corner. They're a man short on a corner. Well, you kind of choose your poison, don't you? That, I mean, right. you really come up to see if you can stuff that or you run the risk of the two touchdown passes that you've given up. Obviously, they they, they feel they're, they were uncomfortable. They went with three deep. They have a middle safety in the last play. First down gain. Here we are at the 33. Williams under a lot of pressure and eventually brought down by App State there for a loss. Monty Smith helping there out of Shelby, North Carolina for App State's defense. 
I tell you, to the right, to uh, Appalachian State, right side of their defense has done a good job. They, they keep running to the left, but they're doing that for balance, but uh, they haven't had much to the left here. Jarrell Carter also in on that last defensive stop, the leading tackler in the Southern Conference. And we're looking at the end of the quarter here as the clock ticks away, and the Eagles of Georgia Southern flying high right now with a 14-point lead after the first 15 minutes. We will take a break. And keep in mind that you can turn to CSS throughout the college football season for extensive coverage of the ACC and the SEC, two of the top-rated football conferences in the nation. Catch eight football replays each week to check out your favorite team and preview the competition. That's all on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Meantime, if you've just tuned us in, you've missed a couple of touchdown passes. That's right, touchdown <laughs> passes on the part of Georgia Southern as they march down the field on a couple of possessions to own a 14-0 lead here at the start of the second quarter. Second and 10 from the 33, and the dive is to Austin for a short game. Appalachian went to the three deep again. They're protecting that middle now for that post pattern. Well, it's kind of punch, counter punch with the yeah, coaches, I, I guess, so. right? You know, one coach sees what the others, and then he adjusts, and then he says, well, if he goes back, we know what we'll do, too. It's those guys in this booth next door changing those things down to the coaches. It's a chess game. Both well-coached football teams, though. They, they both make good adjustments, and they're both good football teams. Third and six, important for App State's defense right here to see if they can stop this drive before it gains any additional momentum. Williams looking to go left, finds some room, and then is brought down in a hard, hard way there by number 56 for App State, Joe Souter, a junior out of Tarboro, North Carolina. Yeah, Travis Sims had trouble holding his block right there. Uh, I think they had a little slant on inside. Suter with a terrific play to bring up a fourth down situation. This will be the first punt we've seen today from Georgia Southern. They've gone for it the other two times. Guess what? They got the wind at their back for a punt. Now that's the good thing. It's kind of worked out for them, hasn't it? Sure Dan has. Jordan, his longest is 55 this year. And with this breeze at his back, he'll let it go here with the ball spotted at about the 38. Not real high. Going to be field, fielded at about the 20. Looking Got back for running line. room. Look at him come our way. Devon Folks, one of the most exciting guys in the Southern Conference, finally gets a chance to show some of his speed. He leads the nations in a couple of different receiving categories. We'll see if he gets untracked on that side before games end. He's one of the best punt, uh, kick returners in the history of the Southern Conference. His, his statistics bear that out. He's, he's extremely dangerous back there. 41-yard punt, 22-yard return, and this is a little bit of a morale boost, I think, because App State was able to stop Georgia Southern there this time. Flank it to the wide side here. Williams over center, gives. And that ball's loose near the Georgia Southern bench. All the guys in blue are yelling that way. Nobody in a striped shirt is now saying it. And yes, in fact, Georgia Southern has re recovered that fumble near midfield. Well, three Georgia Southern players, I think that was Atwater that, that uh, fumbled. Ball recovered right in front of the Georgia Southern bench. I know A.J. Bryant was in on the mix. Let's see who else was a part of this fumble recovery. John Mowring. Mowring with the recovery. And here is Georgia Southern with instant field position at the 48-yard line of App State. They're back to the pressing corners, and what's the first thing? That Williams under pressure. And man, is he brought down hard in his own backfield by Mark, it's Marcus Morrell, second in the conference in sacks. He went back to nine guys in the box there and, and put some pressure on with the blitz. Defensive stop there for App State. Seven yard loss on the play, making it a second and 17 with the ball now pushed back to the 45. tight end formation flag on the play there 
a little movement perhaps in the offensive set there. Things didn't really look in sync for Georgia Southern from like, the time they broke the huddle. It's like Chris Moat moved. First penalty of the game, though, that we've seen here early in the second quarter. 71 off start on five-yard penalty. Still offensive second line down. there for Georgia Southern, and that'll be another five yards. That's going to create an even deeper hole for these Eagles as that ball now will be at the 40-yard line and about a 22 yards to go for a first down. That's not option offense uh, distances from those sticks right now. Now they backed off. They're going to they're going to play pass defense here. Second and 22. Williams kind of float one, floats it outside there and gets it into the hands of number 19. And that's P.J. Cantrell. They got to wrap them up here, huh? Well, well you, out in the open field, number nine's on an island out there. That's a pretty good move offensively. The stick eventually there by number eight, Jeremy Wiggins. And it's a third and 12 now after that game. Third and 12, ball at the 50, Williams back to pass again. Complete to number 85, and he gets inside now for the first down. Teddy Kraft, and he's a guy that, boy, they want to get the ball to him as many times as they can. Just run a little curl in the inside in the open seam. We're seeing exactly the opposite of what we expected. The passing success is with Georgia Southern. But their passing success, Walt, wouldn't be so good if they didn't have to honor oh, that, exactly that, that right. run all the time, right? They are so they fear that option so much. First and ten, ball at the 36. Austin trying to bull his way there to the 35-yard line. Eventually Brad stopped West. there by, uh, yeah, West. West uh, father is the D-line coach at Clemson, and uh, he's playing there at App State in Boone. Well, Morrell's brother played uh, for the Arizona Cardinals in the NFL, and he's considered one of the best defensive linemen to play at uh, Appalachian State in a long time. Second and nine, App State trying to hold Georgia Southern off on yet another Long drive. Williams not liking exactly the defensive scheme that he sees across the way. He calls timeout for Georgia Southern. It's a 14-0 lead. Georgia Southern's kind of been in charge here since we started this game at high noon. We'll come back to see if App State can keep them off the board. Back at Paulson Stadium this afternoon. Homecoming day it is here for Georgia Southern as they take on App State. Chaz Williams at this point, four of five passing for 82 yards and a couple of touchdowns today. And he's not the quarterback named Williams we thought would have such an effective day passing. This time, Williams keeps it. And he's got the first down and more down to the 20-yard line. Chaz Williams, the Southern Conference Player of the Year in 2002, missed three games with injuries last year. But they say they're starting to see him right now just where he was maybe in 2002. He's reading the defenses very well. He, he read that perfectly cut up in the scene. Could change the direction. First down, 10 at the 20. Right up the middle to Austin. And that last run looked like he was doing the slalom. It was zigzagging in and out, going down the ski slope. Well, Williams, you know, he's 207. 5'11", but he's tough to get a handle on. He really has got some very shifty feet. And strong legs. He, he breaks a lot of tackles. Very little game for Austin there. Maybe about a yard. We'll call it second and nine ball at the 19-yard line. Georgia Southern threatening to go up three touchdowns here in this one. Williams looking to his right. Can't find much room, and he has stopped in his own backfield there. Number 44, Marcus Merle with the stop there and uh, the defensive end for App State getting credit for that stop. He's one of the good ones in a long line of defensive uh, linemen at Appalachian State. As I mentioned earlier, his brother played in the NFL for the Arizona Cardinals. That's a good football family. Third and 11. Here we are now, Walt. Ball at the 21. <laughs> Let's see if we're in two down territory for uh, Mike Seawalk's squad here or not. I think if he gets six or seven, then we're in, we're in four down territory. 
Williams looking to pass. Ball is loose and now kicked yeah. towards the sideline. Is it recovered in time or did it just bounce out of bounds? Let's see what the Zebras figured out here as they get over there near that far sideline in front of the App State bench. Depends on where his foot was when he, when he scooped that ball up. Williams kind of pumped. Ball came loose. Uh, ball was on the right line. Right on the line, isn't it? That, that looked like it was out of bounds on the line. You know, some of the Big Ten, I think the Big Ten's experimenting with the... Uh, yeah, the, the replay and yeah, such? Yeah, the replay challenges, yeah. Ball's going to be ruled to have bounced out of bounds, and that'll be a fourth down from that point for Georgia Southern. Well, with the wind at your back, uh, uh, that's a 47-yard field goal, but I think you got a legitimate chance. Jonathan Dudley, his longest is 41 this year. That wind should help him. It's a tough angle from that left hash mark. Franklin County, Georgia's Jonathan Dudley with Got the kick. Leg. It's up and it's good from 47 yards. And Georgia Southern adds three more points to the board. Now, I was going to say, you got to hook that ball. It looks like one of your drives, Warren. They hooked that from right to left, right to the uprights. One of mine that are intentionally hit that way or accidentally <laughs> no, hit that I way? It, I, I saw you play a few weeks ago. <laughs> We've got a 17-0 lead. Georgia Southern seeming to go up and down the field when they want to. Come back and see if App State can do anything to count. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, the homecoming crowd here at Paulson Stadium now with nine minutes left in the second quarter enjoying Georgia Southern's advantage. We're coming to you from Statesboro, Georgia here. Warren Pepper, Walt Nadzak, and Ted Byrne along here with this broadcast from CSS. Here's Dexter Jackson bringing it out for App State. Boy, is he upended inside the 20-yard line. Ball may be marked about the 16, but flying down there to John. really deliver the hit, John Moore. Mooring. Wow, that was a great hit. 8.56 remaining in the second quarter, and App State, though they did get their second possession down inside the 20, has really had a little bit of problem. This is going to be our first look at Williams now trying to throw against the win. Right. I think he'll be more accurate, to be honest with you. He's got a strong arm. He doesn't need the, uh, the help of the win. Last week, in 45 attempts, he only had five incompletions. Today, he was incomplete five of his first eight. He's under pressure and trying to get outside. Gets close to the first down stick there on the far sideline. That outside contain over there broke down for Georgia Southern. Uh, he started to pursue. I think he thought he was going to throw the ball and, and went inside on the pass rush. Dudley with a field goal moments ago there for Georgia Southern. 47 yards, I mentioned that was his career long. That's also the longest field goal in the conference this year. Now, Deron Falks had 14 catches last week against Furman. He's had one today. On the night side, uh, second down, uh, and very close to first down mark there. And they're going to say he did get enough, and it'll be a first down for App State here with uh, just a little over eight minutes remaining in the second quarter. Now, if you can't get to the quarterback, you've got to get those arms up and make them throw over your hands and throw a floater. I don't think sometimes that maybe Georgia Southern's defense always gets as much credit because there's so much conversation about their offense, Walt. Right, but uh, exactly. they're giving this offensive team of App State today uh, an awful lot of trouble. Well, they're a little undersized, but they're quick and they're aggressive. Williams looking outside. He's trying to get it to Folks, but before he could catch it, he'd already stepped out of bounds. That ball against the wind looked to me like it kind of ballooned a bit, huh? It ballooned on him, and he got nailed back there as well. I think he was throwing off his heels. Oh, wow. He, he was really leveled there uh, by Derek Butler as soon as he released the ball. i to have sore ribs after that one. He really got hit. That makes second and 10 now. Ball at the 27. Yeah, Appalachian's got three wide receivers out here to the near side. There are only two defenders out there. They're throwing that bubble screen. Quickly out to Folks, and it, he was immediately smothered. Watching their game last week with Furman, they threw that bubble screen with great success last week. That's the first time they've thrown it tonight uh, or this afternoon. Third and about 11 now. 
for App State. They're just really having trouble in the first half of this game sustaining any offense. They've had one drive. It got to about the 16, and they went for it on fourth down. Now we're third and 11, the ball at 26-yard line, and again, they are wide, wide, wide spread. Looks like a playground out there. Yeah. I mean, there's five to seven yards between each offensive person along that line. And there is a huge hole. They're trying to lob it to Folks in the middle. It's a jump ball, and it comes down incomplete as both Folks and the defender there, number 12 for Georgia Southern. That's Michael Thompson, both wrestling for that ball. Make that 13. I'm sorry to A.J. Bryant's parents for misidentifying that young player at the defensive end, and that's going to create a punting situation for App State. Again, a heavy rush thrown off his heels into a strong wind. That ball just floated up there and gave the defensive back a chance to intercept it because he was beat the, uh, if, if you don't have the wind holding that ball up. Wes Herlocker back to punt at about the 16-yard line. Ball floating and caught near 42-yard line. Outside, number 85 for Georgia Southern is Teddy Kraft. And he has a terrific return inside the 40-yard line. We're going to take a quick timeout. Georgia Southern threatening to head to the end zone again. We've got a little over seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. We'll continue right after this. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Sports Night's army of experts visits the crew this week to bring you the inside news on the NASCAR chase for the next Dell Cup, plus all things football with updates on recruiting, college matchups, and the NFL season. Catch Sports Night live each weekday at 6 and 11 only on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. In the meantime, it's first and 10 at the 35, and it's a 17-0 lead right now. Georgia Southern enjoying this cushion over App State, and they've really done, it seems, what they've wanted to do offensively most of the ball game. If they push this drive in, uh, Warren, it, it's going to be tough for Appalachian to come back. Austin with a big push there along that fr front line, and he's inside the 30-yard line before he's finally wrestled down. His legs look like pistons driving up and down. Jermaine Austin, 5'8", 205 out of Derry in Georgia, and the conference player of the year just a year ago. I mean, you, it's going to take more than one. I mean, you better bring some help here. He had it wrapped. Clock kick ticking to about the six and a half minute mark here of the second quarter. Second and three after Austin's seven yard game. Here's the pitch, and again, it's tossed, and man, that's, that's about the third time today they have had problems there. And uh, let's go down to Ted Byrne here for a quick moment. Ted? Warren, uh, you know, superstition plays a great bit of a, a part of college football. Appalachian State today is wearing black pants. This is the first time since 1998 that they're wearing black pants on the road. They're hoping that that will break a string of being outscored in the first half, 72 to seven on the road. Well, that defense in mourning a bit right now as they're down 17 inside six minutes, and they've been on the field most of the first half. Well, they're definitely in four-down territory here. I, I'm, I'm sure Coach Seawack's going to go for this. It, it looks like it's about a foot short, maybe two feet short. Official timeout, and they're going to try to get a good measurement on this as uh, it's very close to being a first if it's not already, and they'll bring the chains out and see how it looks. You know, Georgia Southern, I mentioned, they're already 4-0 in the league. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're barely half a dozen games into the season, it seems, and uh, they've got that opening loss that they suffered to Georgia. And uh, they actually play. I don't know how many folks got a chance to see that game around the southeast early, and it's just going to be a little bit short here for the first down. But then they've scored 84 against Johnson C. Smith, 58 here against Wofford, 51 at Chattanooga, 48 against Elon, 38 at Western a week ago. They're doing a little payback for last year, losing some of these games. And they, well, they're yeah. at the Citadel next week, and that's another payback week for them. You're right, and you make a point because they were 7-4 and four last year, and a lot of folks were mumbling around town, what's going on with this program? What's going on with this team? 7-4 nope. and four for a lot of programs would be okay. Yes, and they, and they <laughs> missed the playoffs for the first time in uh -huh. a long time. Well, they've come back uh, maybe with a statement in mind. 
Here we are, fourth and one. This is the third time they've gone for fourth down today. And Chaz Williams keeps it and gets it. I don't think they were going to throw the ball again on fourth down like they did down here at the other end. That line, we call that in the business wedge blocking. They just got hips to heads to hips. and Today he's uh, four for five, Chaz Williams with two touchdowns, 85 yards. And you're saying, is that the, are we talking about the right Williams? Because we knew coming in, Reggie Williams had the big arm and the big uh, passing numbers. Here's Chaz Williams looking again. And all along in the end zone, Georgia Southern with Teddy Kraft bringing it in. Touchdown, Eagles. And, and I'm shocked on that one, Warren. Jeremy Wiggins got turned around and got beat one-on-one. -on -one. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon for Chaz Williams. Wiggins is not happy with himself. He's a good football player. He just got beat on that pattern. And this is on the money, and Kraft is all alone. Oh, there, there's Jeremy chasing him. He, I think he was looking into the backfield. For Kraft, it's the fifth straight game. He's caught a touchdown pass, and that is a new school record. The point after is good, and it's 24-0 Georgia Southern over App State in a game that I think a lot of us thought coming in would be A, high scoring, and B, kind of close. Georgia Southern's come out and just taken control here, Walt. Sometimes when you anticipate a shootout like this, you figure both teams are going to do it, and then I think, well, maybe this is going to be a 10-7 game and everybody's going to be disappointed, but the scoring for George Southern's kept their end of the bargain. Appalachian has really throttled down that passing game of Appalachian State. Well, I really do believe that Georgia Southern's defense, and I kind of talked about this a moment ago, I think they felt coming in, all right, we're going to, you know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of hype about App State and what they did offensively last week against Furman. Let's just kind of show some folks around the league exactly what kind of defense we do have. Downstairs to Ted Byrne. Warren, you've talked about the swapping in roles here today, and yes, Georgia Southern is known for their running, but you'd be surprised if you looked at the stats, you would see Georgia Southern is up 70% in their passing when they pass for touchdowns. So they don't pass often, but when they do, it counts. Thanks, Ted. They have certainly been efficient in that department today. I mean, three touchdown passes for Chaz Williams, and he continues to really shine in this his senior year. Well, they've had to adjust a lot of different offenses. You know, when they opened the season at Georgia, they, they had to play defense against the pass and the run, mm -hmm. and they were competitive uh, except for a few big plays. And, in the Southern Conference now, they look like they're the quickest, uh, most aggressive team I've seen. Here's Dexter Jackson trying to pick his way through, and he does get it out to about the 25-yard line for App State, and that's the field position now that Reggie Williams and his Mountaineer offense will enjoy as they head out here inside five minutes left in the second quarter. I'd like to see the time of possession here pretty soon. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, exactly what it is, but it's, it's significant. Williams to this point, and we're talking Richie Williams now, the quarterback for App State, 5 of 12, no touchdowns, 59 yards passing to this point. And that's coming off 413 yards last week against Furman. Williams looking down the right side, trying to get folks who just can't get any space at all, very tightly covered along that far sideline there by Terrence McBride. I think McBride gave them a little extra cushion because they, uh, they feel they've got to stop the pass now. With the score being what it is, Appalachian's probably going to not have enough patience to try to run the ball much. Well, last week, Furman led, I think it was 7-3 at halftime in that game against App State, and App State figured out some things during the intermission. They're going to have a whole lot to figure out here today because they've had very limited success moving this ball either way, but predominantly uh, with what they really do well is through the air. You know what a sandwich is? They just had one out there. That receiver was in the middle of that sandwich. He got hit by both sides. This Georgia Southern defense right now gesturing to this homecoming crowd to get on its feet and really appreciate what they're getting ready to do because they said it's a third down long. We're getting ready to stuff them again, according to the folks on the blue jerseys. 
and let's see if Williams can find Folks or one of his other receivers to get this first down converted. Folks is out to the right. He's got a slot out there as well. He's looking right. Pumps oh, him once. Gets a little bit of space, but there's nobody open downfield, and that's the credit to the defensive second. For Georgia Southern, along with the heavy push along that offensive Georgia line. Georgia Southern had an outside blitz, and he just ran right by uh, Williams. The defense holds, punting units onto the field, and App State's going to be forced to get this ball up once again. He just doesn't have anybody to get it to, does he? McBride, yeah. I think that was McBride on the blitz coming off the corner that uh, forced him to go outside of him. So Wes Herlocker will come on the field again and kick for App State. This one off the side of his foot. Bounces about midfield and now it's inside the 40. They're just going to back off and touch that one down at about the 37 or 8 yard line. And that is where Georgia Southern will have it with just under four minutes remaining in the half. I don't think what you're going to see here is somebody just kind of sit on it. I believe no. they're going to see if they can punch one more in before uh, the clock elapses. They're going to run their offense, and that, that, today it's been uh, the, the play calling's been excellent. They've mixed the pass and the run, and they, they're not uh, predictable today. So Chaz Williams will see if he can get these Eagles into the end zone yet again here inside four minutes. So far, Austin has carried the ball, as he does right there, for 45 yards, and that's his 14th carry of the uh, first half. That's another purpose call. They keep banging them in there, but that's what's causing them to Appalachian to break down on the corners and in the secondary. They're, they seem too preoccupied with Austin. They're, they're bunching the, a lot of people inside defensively. That'll be a short gain. Maybe a couple they'll call it, and then it'll be second and eight here for Georgia Southern. Ball marked at about the 41-yard line. Warren, there's no middle safety again. And they're, and they're going, going deep. deep. Yep. All alone oh. off the fingertips there. Oh, he just couldn't bring it in. Number four, Jason Foster. They had, a, their, mm. they had the right play called. That defense was walked up. Watch this. And I'll tell you what, they uh, right on his fingertips. Well, they run that dive, so you got to honor that. And then they oh, yeah. run something just streaking down the yeah. right side. I think they're doing a good job. I don't know if I, I, I'd like to find out uh, from Ted down there if he can steal some information from that sideline and whether he's calling automatics when there's no free safety. That gives us third and eight. Ball of the 39 here, and we'll see uh, exactly what they try this time. There's going to be a Williams dropping back to pass. He's going to swing it out to Austin on the left side. Picks his way past the first couple of defenders, but then he's brought down at the 40-yard line. That's a little screen. And a late flag flown in uh, by the referee after the play was over. I think that was a, a face mask that uh, nobody saw but the referee, and, and he's coming from a long way off. Gene Hartley comes in there, and uh, Georgia Southern is acting like uh, they believe that's against App State. App State's pleading its case there. Looked like an inadvertent face mask. It wasn't a personal foul. I think it could be a five-yard penalty in first down. Five-yard face mask. Number 44, defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, it's not an automatic first? Not maybe if it's inadvertent. That's there really right there it there. is right there. It's yeah. uh, definitely hand on the front there. Yeah. And that's going to bring it down closer to the uh, first yard marker, but uh, not still enough. It's a uh, third down still, though. That's third down short, and that's in Georgia Southern's wheelhouse right now. Yeah, I think they just live for these moments right here because it does open up an awful lot of options. Do you just kind of stick it in Austin's gut and let him pop it through the middle for something sizable? Or do you let Williams kind of swing it out here to one of these well, I think many gonna, running backs? I think they'll do a safe uh, running play because they, they've got two chances to make a couple yards. Well, they give it to T.J. Anderson. And, you know, mission accomplished, and he takes it around that left side for the first. Just a short misdirection play. We've got inside three minutes now. The clock at 2.45, and Georgia Southern with that third down conversion now maintaining possession and hoping to stick another score on the board here for this homecoming crowd here this afternoon at Paulson Stadium. Double slot. Austin 
churning and picking up sizable yardage, maybe five or six yards, maybe even more by the time they mark the forward progress. It looked like Chaz uh, changed that play right there, and, and it's a good choice. He saw something in the defense where he can get five yards, and coaches, uh, he's coached. If you see that on first down, you take it. There's Austin. Ah, boy, he is just a powerful, powerful runner. Averaging 10.6 per carry coming into this game. Second and four at the 45. They're just going to give you a steady die yeah. to him right now, I think. Well, they're going to wear that defense down. That defense has been on the field an awful lot today. Well, they've got time. I don't know how many, how many timeouts uh, George Southern has left. I think they have two left. They're going to stop the clock and get an uh, official measurement here to see if, in fact, uh, they've gotten the first already or if it's going to be third and short. They're going to go ahead and say it is definitely first down with a minute 39 remaining. Let's see if they take a couple of shots downfield. The passing has been effective without question on the heels of uh, three touchdown passes to this point. Yeah, he New uh, center coming in. Lance Wayne went out. Suarez now with the center exchange to Williams. Williams looking for a receiver. The pass is complete, but he was out of bounds on the reception there, so they'll bring it back. And T.J. Anderson uh, very closely guarded there along the way. There wasn't much there. They had that pretty well covered. He had nothing to run. He couldn't. There was no running lane for him to break that out. Along the sidelines, uh, he is uh, one of the guys that actually helps us. Uh, he's part of the crew today. Uh, Reed. He works here at uh, Georgia Southern. Reed Smith. He, uh, you see the red hat. That he's known as the red hat because he helps with the timeouts and coordinating with the officials and we hope he's going to be okay he just took one for the team Williams meanwhile minute and a half over the outstretched hands of Kraft and that falls incomplete as we head for the end of the second quarter you okay Reed okay all right that was his hat bit like that before Okay, I'm not sure he, he had that crease in it beforehand or not. I hope he's going to be all right. Warren, uh, if you notice, the last two plays, Appalachian State had at least four to five players walking back to position with their hands on their hips. They're dragging. And you know what that indicates? Mm -hmm. They're tired. Oh. And they're used to playing on artificial turf, and this is grass. And Third and ten. Ball at the 41. Williams looking across the middle. Ball is complete, and it's complete into the arms of number 19 for Georgia Seller. That is P.J. Cantrell. First down, Georgia Southern. We're at minute 14. There's no question they're trying to stick another seven, oh, wow. if not three, on the board. There's a one-man pattern, a little curl out there. One thing you notice, Warren, when you watch other games in television, how many times a guy curls two yards short of the first down sticks? Uh -huh. That receiver went two yards deep beyond the, the first they down stick back. and came back and made sure he had the first down if the ball's thrown on the money. We're inside a minute. The clock is ticking at the 52nd and counting mark. Second and seven at the 23. Whistle on the field there by the lines. There's going to be a timeout there for Georgia Southern. They've got 43. They want to manage this as best they can with the timeouts remaining. And they'd like to go ahead and talk right now, I would think, about exactly what they want to do the next couple of plays. Yeah, they, they might call uh, two plays in the huddle right now to save time, have two plays ready to go, unless they move the sticks where it's stopped for a first down. It's homecoming here this afternoon at Paulson Stadium here in Statesboro, Georgia. We'll be talking with Georgia Southern Athletic Director Sam Baker here at halftime. We'll also be hearing from the AD at App State, Rochelle Laney. And uh, Ted Byrne will be talking with uh, Athletic Director Laney. I'll be talking with Sam Baker here in our uh, broadcast position up top in the press box. So if you want to find out more about both those schools and what's going on in those respective campuses athletically, we'll invite you to those conversations here at halftime. 
Warren, I'd like to point something out here. There's a uh, projected rule change. It's not, it hasn't happened, but it's being discussed now by the NCAA Rules Committee to go more to the pro rule that you do not stop the clock on a first down in college football. Uh -huh. I, I'm not sure where that stands, whether it's going to pass or not, but it is being discussed, and it makes a dramatic effect on games, late in the, uh, timeouts late in the game. And Williams has had a phenomenal first half here. Seven for 11, 121 yards, three touchdowns. He may not be finished with 43 seconds left. The world of time. Here's the give to Austin. He tries to spin away and just not released. Number nine there, William Mayfield, keeps him at about the 20-yard line. The clock continues to tick. Maybe a couple more plays here if they can get one out of bounds or incomplete. They called two in the huddle. They were ready to go in the second play. Williams looking at the corner of the end zone. Stopped short of the end zone and did not get in is T.J. Anderson. Looked like he wanted to, instead of diving in, he wanted to kind of just check himself for the defender to make a play. Then he would go around him, but the defender was able to get him out of bounds. Great throw, great catch, great coverage. 18 seconds remaining. There's Anderson, and he doesn't get in. The uh, official's right there. We've got 18 seconds left. Williams has got him back at the line, and the ball's at the one. Spike the ball, and they get in the huddle. He's going to take it right in, and it looks like the teammates want to yeah, say touchdown, but Gary. nobody with a striped shirt is indicating that. Now it does. Touchdown, Georgia Southern, with 12 seconds remaining in the half. And Chaz Williams, oh, by the way, I guess he says, well, I've got three touchdowns passing. Let me just kind of sneak this one in. You thought they might spike well, it and set up? I, yeah, I was afraid if they don't have any timeouts left, he doesn't get in there. They don't have time to line up and run another play. If he spikes the ball, they got time to run another play. Williams is able to get it in. And on hand for the point after is Jonathan Dudley. 30 to nothing right now. A team that averages 51 points a game is right on target. Dudley up, and the ball hits the right post. No good, 30 to nothing. Another drive by Georgia Southern that covers this time 63 yards, taking just 344 off the clock and leaving 12 seconds on the clock for App State before halftime. Warren, look at the Appalachian walking off the field over uh -huh. there. They're tired. Look at that. Well, that defense have des has definitely been out there for uh, the majority of the they're, first they're, two quarters. They're definitely dragging. Their shirts are out. They're, they're taking their hats off. They're walking very slow. Chaz Williams called the heart and soul of this team. Eight for 12 today, throwing the ball. Three touchdowns passing. He's also got one now rushing after that one-yard dive. He's had a pretty good afternoon, and we're just Two quarters done. What are the odds about a swivel kick here? Well, against the breeze, well, uh, they uh, they're with the breeze this they, time, they right? Kick it deep. Yeah, but you don't want to give the ball to Fox. You want to kick it maybe to the the hashes at around the 30 or 25. Georgia Southern to this point has had the ball more than 22 and a half minutes of the 30 in the first half. I mean, that's a serious, you know, some coaches don't get all caught up in that whole time of possession thing if you're effective on the times that you have it, you know? That's right. But uh, when you're effective and you consume the clock, uh, that's exactly why you're 30. When you cross down. that last line, that's effective. Mm -hmm. Well, you were right, Warren. They kicked it deep into the end zone, and not taking any chances of of uh, something happening on the short kick. So, App State will get one more chance to touch it here. Just 12 seconds remaining, all things considered, there in the uh, second quarter here, just before halftime. But they really haven't had a lot of time to do much with it to begin with today because Georgia Southern's offense has so dominated this game. They, uh, it looks like they're going to take a knee. They've got the tailback. The safety guy there. Yeah, just, uh, 12 yards, 15 yards deep in case there's a fumble. So that'll do it for the first half. Georgia Southern averaging 50 points a game. Well, they're pretty much on target. They've already scored 30 in the first two quarters behind a terrific job by Chaz Williams.
As they head to the locker room on that far side, Walt, you've been in those locker oh, rooms yeah, before. I, I don't I've know how many times enough. you were down 30 nothing or not, but well, once what do you or tell twice. Those guys? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what they have to do to get back in the game, I mean, they've got to they've got to shore up the defense. They've got to get them off the field. They've got to control the ball a little more offensively. They've got to pass protect better. And when they give those huge gaps and, and Georgia Southern penetrates, that, that's just not they, – they have got to run some time off the clock and still try to get in the end zone. Well, we've got a 30 to nothing lead by Georgia Southern, and you look at this very disconsolate App State team kind of walking up the uh, – the hill here on the far sideline as they head to the locker room knowing they really have their work cut out for them headed into the second half of play. We'll take a break, come back with some halftime conversations for you here. Hope you'll join us here live from Statesboro. Georgia Southern in control right now, 30 to nothing over App State. About to begin the second half, and it has been all Georgia Southern to this point. A key moment in that first and half, Georgia I think, Southern is when on a fourth down situation for App State, with the game still very much uh, just a touchdown or so, uh, just two touchdowns, they went for it at the 16-yard line, and an incomplete pass uh, prevented them from progressing on down into the end zone, and I think that was a huge moment for App State from a momentum standpoint when they had a chance there to put some points on the board and they came away empty. They will get the ball to start the second half and set to return this kick in the opening third quarter. Deep, you've got Devon Folks number 22 and Dexter Jackson number two. Folks has really been held in check today. The wide receiver, highly touted, leading the nation in receptions, coming in and he's also one of the top uh, all-time leader in career punt returns. Closing in on the Southern Conference mark there, but that prevents him from doing anything when that ball's kicked out of the end zone. No chance. That ball wasn't only out of the end zone. It was 10 yards deep out of the end zone. That wind is still blowing strong. And it's been that way since the opening uh, moments of this game, and it's a sun splash Saturday afternoon homecoming here at Statesboro. They haven't listed the crowd yet, but capacity here is... Uh, 18,000, and it's hard to say because so many people watch from the uh, the banks. Here we are, Richie Williams. You know, Warren, they say the first series of the second half, and I, and I believe that as a coach, it's the most important series of a game when you're behind. Well, it looked like a very uh, definite approach there as they tried to not run it with that water, but to try to swing him out on the opening play here in the second half, and that falls incomplete as well. And, and George Southern had it read perfectly anyway, but this, this is a key, key series. They've got to make a few first downs because they'll be punting into the wind and give Georgia Southern great field position again, and they just can't let that happen if they're going to get back in this ball game at all. Williams, second and 10, ball at the 20. That ball was tipped at near the line of scrimmage, and uh, it was number 98 there for Georgia Southern, who was able to get a hand on it. And we've heard his name once or twice already today, Eric Hadley, because not only has he played defense all afternoon, but he caught the first touchdown pass as he was inserted as a kind of a tight end and a fourth down situation on the opening sequence of the game. He was in Williams' face on that throw, too. I mean, that, that's tough to throw when you're on your heels falling backwards. Third and ten. And here's that wide, wide spread from sideline to sideline that we've seen a couple of times already from App State. Oh, my. Huge He's rush. Contained, bro. Williams looking downfield. Ball's underthrown and into the arms of Lewis Barr, who makes the interception near midfield. Throwing into the wind that deep. It's the worst thing that could happen to Appalachian. Richie Williams rolling to his left, looking for some help. And that ball just floats up well short of the intended receiver, and Lewis Barr is able to bring it in. I think Richie Williams could have run for the first down there, Warren. They had contained, was broken down. He got outside on the corner, but he thought he had a big play. But that wind that held that ball up. Georgia Southern will start at the 49-yard line. They give to Austin. He's looking to break through. He goes in the 30. Brought down at the 24-5 yard line and a huge gain by the fullback for Georgia Southern. He broke at least three tackles on that run. His longest run this year has been 23 yards. And he always seems to find a way to break away when you least expect it. Look at it. A little arm tackling out there. You can't bring him down arm tackling. You've got to put a helmet on him. First down. 
So there goes Austin. He came in, as we mentioned earlier, averaging over 10 yards a carry this year. They give to Austin again, right up the middle. Or and they're just wearing them down. That, that offensive line's coming off the ball. They, they've replaced that tackle that they lost. They, they certainly have. Earlier this year, and this gives you an idea, I think, of, uh, of just the kind of coach, disciplinary, and, and, and the guy that wants to really send messages. Coach Seawalk sat Austin for being late for a curfew, suspended him for a game. He's an old school coach and, uh, and he, they usually get results. There's Austin again, fighting his way for even additional yardage. He's not quite to the 10 yard line. And if, if Coach Seawak's wife is listening to this, I don't mean old, old coach. I mean old coach philosophy. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, uh, earlier this year, this was against Chattanooga. Had over 160 on this day, and they run that little quick hitter up the middle, and he's got the powerful legs. Right now, he's got over 100 yards here early in the third quarter on 21 carries. First and 10 from the 12. Austin again. They're giving him a steady diet of Austin here the last three he's or four plays. Now. Well, he's got his 100 yards. He doesn't get any cheap ones, does he? Yeah, you don't get a, a good shot. I mean, he's short, he's stocky, he's strong, he's quick. Player of the year a year ago out of Darien, Georgia. Twenty-two rushes so far for 103 yards. He's yet to get into the end zone. But if he keeps this up, he will. And here's the pitch to the outside. Trying to fight against containment, finally brought down against the five-yard line. Georgia Southern knocking again, thanks to the nice effort there by number 31. That's Lenon Jefferson. He spun out of that tackle and got an extra uh, three or four yards right here. Great effort. Austin already with his third 100 plus yard performance of the year. And we're still early in the third quarter here. And we're in four down territory. Third and two there. I don't think they'll be kicking a field goal. They're going to get the first down if they can. There's Chaz Williams who walks in untouched for yet another touchdown. And Georgia Southern seizes the moment after the interception to march 50 yards for the touchdown. Did you see everybody converge on Austin there? And he's now run a couple and thrown Good. a couple more. Everybody's inside. What a day Chaz Williams is having. I'll tell you what, uh, he, he's having a great day. But he's a consistently good quarterback. When he's injury free, he, he really can run a football club. He can, he can make things happen for you. The point after is good. 49 yards, they go in six plays. And yet another touchdown added. 37-0, Georgia Southern leads App State back in just a moment. Everybody, Georgia Southern continuing to roll here over App State, 37-0. Mike Seawalk trying to keep this thing rolling. Ted Byrne, uh, you spent quite a bit of time in this South Georgia area. Just how serious and loud were the whispers last year when this team was seven and four? Well, you know, uh, uh, for a seven and four year for Georgia Southern fans, it's horrible. If the season isn't 15 games long, they don't know what to do. Mike Seawalk made a dedication this summer to really get everybody focused and he also exemplified that because every day he was in the weight room with the players working out. He's lost over 60 pounds since last year, and uh, he's rededicated himself to getting in shape, and certainly the team has too, and they all have come out with a tremendous focus, and it was good because uh, they would see each other passing each other in and out of the weight room, and I think, Walt, you were you were trying to get together with Mike yesterday, and he was busy in the weight room. Uh, yeah, I had a kind of a, a, an appointment with him, and he was in the weight room working out, and uh, I waited for him. Uh, he's always nice to interview, easy to talk to, uh, and, a, and a great background. Well, a new sense of purpose, a, a, a new wardrobe, I guess, as well, for yeah. uh, Mike Seawalk. I'd like year. to have the money he spent on clothes. Well, <laughs> he's uh, 
got a new attitude there, and I think uh, you're right, Ted. I think that is uh, for nothing else. It kind of uh, don't just hear what I say, watch what I do, and I'm going to show this crowd that uh, we all need to get a little more serious around here. After their opening loss to Georgia, they've rolled off five consecutive wins. They're averaging over 50 points a game. In the meantime, Richie Williams has got to figure out something that he's been unable to figure out in that secondary most of the afternoon. And there he goes to the ground on a a fake exchange that he gets tangled up in one of his teammates and he's just really had some problems all around this afternoon. I think he stepped on the guard's foot. The guard's pulling right there. Number 78 uh, bumped his foot. Yep. Little sprawl there and he kind of uh, hooking up there with their legs and now the folks here are getting a little louder on a third and 12 with a ball on 18. I will tell you this, the Georgia Southern fans, they smell blood in the water. They start really certain. Well, you don't want to be in third and long facing a stiff win. Down 37 points. Reggie Williams with the quarterback keep, and he is really hammered to the ground there by number nine. And that is Rico Zachary of Georgia Southern who came up from that secondary to deliver the hit. So it'll be another punting situation. And that's kind of been a too often viewed formation for App State this afternoon. Wes Herlocker back and he's going to receive this inside his 10. He may be close to the five or six yard line by the time he kicks this. I think Georgia Southern might go after this ball. So that, there's no reason to because it's going to be a short kick into that win. Into the uh, win. They're going after it. And it is tipped. And it tipped. And it took a Georgia Southern bounce. That ball kicked back from the 25-yard line. It's going to be set at about the 22 or 3. And that's where Georgia Southern starts this drive. Would you like to have that field position right now? I mean, you don't get the ball in the 22 very often after a punt. Well. You know, you, you're trying to be positive here, trying to think of some good things, and I guess the only good thing I can think of right now is that you might get it back quicker than you would have if you had been down here. There is a new quarterback into the game, and for Georgia Southern, that's Trey Hunter, who's been primarily a backup most of this year and did have a good game earlier this year, and now he is on for the first time today. No, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's Trey Elder, Warren. Too many trays out there. Here we go. Uh, we had a little silence there. Warren and I were comparing the notes here. <laughs> All right, we've got second and eight. Hunter trying to uh, kind of come on now in relief a bit for Chaz Williams, who's had just a phenomenal day. And I don't know that we're, we're done with him for the day. Uh, it is a 37 nothing, but just to give you an idea why he's kind of going to get a break, uh, he's 8 for 12 throwing the ball, 140 yards, three touchdowns, 14 carries, 11 yards, two touchdowns rushing. He's just had a phenomenal, phenomenal afternoon. And Coach Seawalk says, you know, have a seat, son. Let's see if we can get Trey Hunter a little time. Hunter with the pitch to the outside. That ball nearly lost after four or five steps with it being carried. You know, Warren, yesterday when I talked to Coach Mike Seawak, he said, you know, Trey Hunter needs some work. Keep his timing, keep his focus in case Chaz gets nicked a little bit. So I think this is one of a good opportunity for Trey to get, get the feeling, get his timing back with the option, get his timing right on the rides inside on this option offense. Justin Brown there with the carry, and that's going to present a field goal situation here on the fourth down and uh, very long, uh, so they're going to go ahead and try to kick this field goal by Jonathan Dudley. The ball set, oh, it's going to be, uh, what, uh, we'll 42. call it about uh, the 27, 40, 37-yard uh, uh, line or so? I think 42. No, you're right, 42. So. And he, he <laughs> that was actually Tim 
a bit at the line of scrimmage and still had enough to get over. And it's a field goal added to the total of 40 now for Georgia Southern. When things go well, they go real well. miss a triple header of college football action next Saturday on CSS, starting with a Big Ten matchup between Indiana and Ohio State at noon. Then the UAB Blazers, who have posted impressive victories over teams from the SEC and the Big 12, take on Conference USA foe Tulane, live at 3.30. And then that's followed by a matchup between Southern Conference powerhouse Furman and Elon at 7. Don't miss it. Georgia Southern now with 40 points, the most ever scored against App State. And that ball again, booming into the back of the end zone. And App State will still try to figure this thing out. That ball hit the crossbar, bounced straight up in the air. Well, up 40 like this, is it just a natural now, uh, a lessening of intensity on the defensive side? Or do a certain amount of uh, guys start thinking, wait, we want to go ahead and solidify this shutout. Let's not let up. What, what's the thinking? Well, you substitute uh, by position. You don't wholesale substitute. You, you keep key people out there that are calling the defense, is calling the secondary for a while. But you give some of your second team players a chance to play a little bit, but you don't want to lose momentum and say we've got it yet because the, things can happen and he almost broke loose right there. Well, we are seeing some new guys on the field right now. Trey Elder, the quarterback, back up now. Uh, Richie Williams sat down after a very tough afternoon and the freshman Elder and he is also uh, giving it to Kevin Richardson there, uh, a backup, a freshman who gets good running room there downfield for App State. There's some clean shirts out there for Georgia Southern. I've got to see how many of them there are, but uh, that's not the entire starting of the defense. That goes to Richardson again, as a couple of freshmen are working in that backfield right now as App State tries to figure out just exactly how to move the ball downfield a little more effectively than they've been able to do most of the day. You wonder whether Chaz Williams has done for the day, st standing down in the far end of the mm -hmm. team bench on the left down there with his hat off and, and uh, doesn't appear to be looking like he's going back in the game unless something changes dramatically. Here's Elder. He as well as Williams, both coming out of South Carolina's high school football program. And that pass, rule complete. Yes, it is going catch. to be complete. It was a well-thrown and caught ball. And Elder is trying to move this team down the field now with a little more success. Well, Lewis Barr for, for uh, George Southern was right there and made the tackle, but... He didn't quite get to the ball. So it's third and one for App State, and the Mountaineers actually are moving the ball a little bit better than they've done uh, most of the day. Reggie Williams' numbers today, 6 of 17 for 60 yards, 7 yards rushing, 4 yards, and not just a, it's a real tough day for him. A procedure penalty there, and with so many different guys coming in, new quarterback and others, uh, there's going to be a certain amount of that, I'm sure, expected. Had a false start there. Uh, that's what happens when you change quarterbacks sometime, and then you're trying to press to get back in this ball game. We'll throw it down to Ted Byrne. Well, if you wonder, if you wonder how the no huddle offense works, we'll tell you right after this play. There's three guys standing on the Appalachian State sideline that are flashing signals. Elders pass downfield intended for Victor Chavis and falls incomplete. Go ahead, Ted. As you look toward the sideline, backup quarterback number 17, Perry Wolbright, is flashing signals, along with Jason Nicholas, the wide receiver coach, and Mark Spear, the running back coach. They're wearing red and yellow wristbands, and one of them is flashing in the right play. The other two are decoys. Well, it's a punting situation yet again for App State. Fourth and six at the 35, and her locker will let it go. Much better punt this time, but against that win, it still kind of floats high into the air and bounces out of bounds at about the midfield line. They're going to mark it maybe about the 48 or 49, and we'll take time between these uh, two sequences here. To see what happens when we come back with just six minutes remaining. App State has not beaten Georgia Southern in Paulson Stadium since 1996. The prospects for that do not look 
to change. 40 to nothing, the Eagles flying high right now over App State. Warren Pepper, Walt Nadzak, and Ted Byrne here along with you today, folks, on CSS. And if you're watching with us this afternoon, six minutes remaining. Back at quarterback now, Trey Hunter, the backup, who is going to be given another chance to move this team downfield as Chaz Williams has really done pretty much anything he wanted to do most of the afternoon. Pitch to the outside. And Georgia Southern continues to work those sidelines uh, to their advantage all day. They've already racked up 339 total yards. App State has now only 96 for the day as we head here midway through the third quarter. Marquise Maynard trying to get that ball around that right side. We've got an injury on the field, and that's Omar Byram for App State, and they're kind of looking at him on the far side as his coaches get him to the sideline for some attention. Looked like he twisted his leg there in that pile, and that sets up a second and four at the 46 for Georgia Southern. That was Marquise Maynard, uh, second team running back for Georgia Southern. They sure got a... a a barnyard full of running backs. Again, this time, uh, Hunter keeps and tries to get back and maybe does uh, for about a yard as Hunter has come on now in relief of Chaz Williams. Not because Williams is hurt or anything. If you're a Georgia Southern fan and you're just tuning in, Williams has just had a whale of an afternoon, and he's kind of just standing on the far end of the sideline there and may be done for the day with this team up 40 to nothing. Mike Seelock enjoying uh, what's happening on this homecoming crowd, and there's Williams there. Collins to his right. I'll tell you about more in just a moment because that's a story that they were very concerned about him today. There's Hunter keeping again. I'll mention Collins to you because uh, number 77 right there, Lost to injury for the year, a preseason all-conference. Twisted his knee in their last game, and they got that word that the 6'4", 291-pound senior was going to be done for the year, and that's been a huge loss to that offensive line that Coach Seawak uh, even talked to you a bit about yesterday, Walt. Right, and, and not only that, I'm, I'm watching uh, Trey at quarterback now, and what, what Coach Seawak told me yesterday, he needs to work on his timing. I think the last two plays, he probably missed the read. Two plays ago, the ball, the red give to the to the fullback, and I think this is great that he's getting the work now in case something does happen to Chaz because he needs game time. You can't do it in practice all the time. He needs game experience, uh, getting his timing down and his reads down. They're just about maybe I don't know uh, half a football short of a first down, and so that's where they'll go. A uh, fourth down there, and uh, certainly no reason at this point not to go for it, with, given the success they've had uh, most of the rest of the afternoon on fourth down situations. Austin has a 104-yard day effort. He's kind of getting a breather himself right now. And Brandon Andrews is in uh, relief at fullback to see if they can convert this first down on fourth and less than one from the 42. Hunter keeps it and appears to have gotten enough for the first down. Both these schools pretty comparable in enrollment. Uh, Georgia Southern has a little over 15,000 here in its campus and App State and Boone, North Carolina with a little over 14,000 and they've really kind of been through the years uh, kind of the, the real cream of football in the Southern Conference, have they not, Will? Yeah, and we've got another measurement down there. You know, I've always said, though, when you talk about schools with less enrollment, like Furman and like Walker, uh -huh. it isn't the enrollment in the school. It's the number of scholarships and support you give the program. Mm -hmm. And they've done it down here, and, and they have a great student body and great fans, and this is football country. They do love their football down here, and uh, I used to talk to coaches and opposing teams who come in here and they knew they had to strap it on when you yeah. walked into Statesboro because not only would the team be ready for you but the fans that love this sport so much down here in this part of the state are waiting on you as well. First down converted and uh, they'll be first and 10 now at the 42. A double slot out here to the right. Motion back. See that, that guy's almost going forward in that motion. Hunter looking for a receiver, then look at the shifty feet. Hunter picking up another first down, and he's inside the 30 down to about the 25-yard line. And that's what he needs. He needs to work. 
sir. He, he, and that's what that's what Coach Mike said yesterday. He needs this work. You know, Warren, get back to our conversation a second ago. I ate breakfast in a, in a famed eatery in Statesboro this morning uh -huh. where there's a large table of gentlemen. Solving the world's problem? Well, they were, they were solving. They were picking the SEC winner, the winner of this game. Okay. And, and I love it because they, I just sat there and ate and listened. First down now at the 26 for Georgia Southern. Hunter showing that he can run this offense as well. The give there to Brandon Andrews right up the middle, and he gets good yardage. Three and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Some new, new people in there again to, to work with Trey. Right. Count numbers. Appalachian overloaded to the wide side of the field, and, and now I know why Mike was trying to run to the short side in the first half. That, that defensive alignment really was, the numbers were to the wide side, and quarterbacks usually count numbers, and then they automatic to the mm -hmm. side of the uh, offense that has less resistance. App State really riding high last Saturday after that come from behind victory over number two ranked Furman. I think a lot of folks in uh, Western North Carolina really thought they might have a chance to come down here and surprise these guys, and boy, was Georgia Southern waiting for them. Here's a pitch to the outside again. With great Renan Jefferson, yet another of that stable of running backs that they've kind of gone to all afternoon, gets first down yardage. And a great block in the corner, Warren. Chains move again, and now we're going to be uh, about first and goal, just about at the 10. Kevin Davis got a great block on that play for Georgia Southern. Well, they really set you up out there. They kind of uh, just kind of walk you down that uh, line of scrimmage, and then somebody peels back with a block, and all of a sudden, a little scat back scoots around the corner. Well, I'm impressed that they're not getting, they're not cracking back from outside the tackle spot. Hunter picks his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. And Trey Hunter gets six more on the board for the Eagles. He's starting to round in the form, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Homecoming here at Paulson Stadium, and the folks are enjoying this. Uh, very few have left at this point, but the score now 46 nothing before the PAT. Starting to trickle out on top of most of the students, it looks like. But, you know, it's Saturday, and the yeah. school's way ahead now, so a bit more important things to do, I think. Point after is up and good, and make it 47 nothing. Georgia Southern now after the nine play drive going 52 yards for yet another TD. Back from Statesboro with more in just a moment. Games, and I hear people even on the weekends after they've seen maybe a game, and say, you know, that game really was closer than it looked. When you look at this stat, it really tells you why there's 47 points on one side and none on the other. 391 total yards for Georgia Southern. 96 total yards today, offense for App State. And that's why there's a 47 nothing lead right now by Georgia Southern. It's been that one-sided since the early first quarter. You know, Warren, and I, these coaches have a lot of respect for each other, and, and Coach Seawack, he's not going to deliberately try to run the score up on, on Jerry Moore. They're, they're <laughs> professional friends. The two Williams that we uh, kind of profiled to begin, uh, six completions out of 17 attempts for App State's Richie Williams. Chaz Williams, three touchdowns, eight of 12 and 140 yards. What an afternoon he had, and he barely played two and a half quarters. Well, they're going to, they the little uh, inside draw play. It's a, a lead draw, they, we used to call it. They're going to have to score quick if they're going to get respectable in this game. Georgia Southern will go to the Citadel next week, and there's a little payback you hear folks here talking about already because of uh, the Citadel and what they were able to do to Georgia Southern last year. 
And that's going to be a tough game for them, but Citadel's in a tough situation. Half the stadium's been torn down for uh, hopefully building a new one in the near future. And, uh, haven't played at home but once uh, so far this season. Elder's pass, meanwhile, complete to Folks, and he's been extremely quiet today, and a lot of that has to do with the job that's being done by Terrence McBride, the cornerback, having a good year out of Sumter, South Carolina, on that left corner over there. He and Folks have been matched up a good bit of the day, and when he wasn't in his back pocket, Lewis Barr was on the other side. Ball's loose. Oh, no. he Elder does he pick it up right back to himself. And I mentioned that Folks had had a tough day, and we're looking at Trey Elder, the backup quarterback, uh, trying his best to get this team moving. And the ball, as soon as it was snapped, was just kind of as he tried to, to gather himself, but it does pop back up in his arms. See that ball hit the heel of his hands. And the quarterback probably was in a little too deep for that exchange. And that's a tough ball to handle. Heading for the final few seconds here of the third quarter as Georgia Southern continues to do pretty much all it wants here in this Southern Conference game this afternoon. Elder fakes the pass and then kind of gathers it in and picks up a few yards running himself as we head to the 32nd mark here at the end of the third. I'm surprised they ran the quarterback with no deception, no fake to a running back and uh, and, and not throwing it in that circumstance. Well, we'll see if Elder has any better luck once he has the wind behind him. That wind has really played a part in App State's ability today to move the ball. Here we go with a little different formation than we've seen. It's, a, it's not quite as wide, but they do have everybody stretched out here. And Elder, as the clock ticks towards zero, is not going to get it off in time. And that will end the third quarter with Georgia Southern leading 47 to nothing. We'll see what some of the backups can do here with one quarter remaining and homecoming being enjoyed by those on hand at Paulson Stadium. And welcome back everybody. 15 minutes remaining in this game and it's going to be a long ride back to Boone for uh, this App State team but came in nationally ranked this afternoon and has yet figured out a way to get on the scoreboard. Now Elder, Trey Elder, the freshman quarterback out of Duncan, South Carolina, has been a little more successful, but let's be fair. I mean, he's playing against some second teamers as well. There's Folks, who's been so quiet today, and that is really just his fourth reception of the day and the most discernible yardage, and it is a positive for App State as it gets them a first down here early. They next week will play Wofford, another team that came in here a couple of weeks ago and got really spanked. He showed his ability there. Catching the ball in the open field, he's tough to handle. The fifth largest crowd in school history watching this game this afternoon at Paulson Stadium. Attendance 22,421. And many of them are still on hand here watching this game here when the uh, 14 and a half minutes that remain. George Southern substituted quite a few people in the, in the interior of this defense at this point. Well, it is homecoming. You got parents and oh, yeah. friends and all coming in and, and former uh, players and all. And uh, this is a great time to be able to say, yeah, we got to see Junior play this afternoon. Well, it's nice for, for one side, but it's really tough on the other side. T.J. Rutledge there. Uh, I wasn't sure we'd see him at all. To, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong name. That was App State that I wanted to call attention to, Kevin Richardson. Folks today has only got four receptions today for a total of 27 yards. And he's a guy who uh, we've mentioned often during the game about 31 straight games with at least one catch and 28 straight games with more than a catch and leads the nation in receptions with 50, but he's only got four today. Pump fake by Elder under a lot of pressure. I mentioned T.J. Rutledge a moment ago, and we haven't had a chance to mention him today. He plays for Georgia Southern, and we'll look at this replay of all the de the defensive heat that continues to be applied by uh, Georgia Southern. But linebacker T.J. Rutledge 
went out of practice Wednesday with a torn bicep. He's done for the year. And that was another concern they had coming in is all of a sudden they had nobody hurt. And in the space of the week, they lose two guys, very instrumental, one offensively, Collins we mentioned earlier, and then Rutledge on the defensive side of the ball. The left-footed kicker, Wes Herlocker there. And the ball received at about the five. Oh, watch him, be careful. He's still on his feet. Jason Foster caught a touchdown pass earlier. He's got one more guy to beat. He's going to take it to the end zone. Touchdown, 95 yards unofficially as Jason Foster weaves his way across the field to yet another touchdown for Georgia Southern. I don't see any flags out there, Warren. He's picking up his beanbag, the official back on the seven-yard line. Oh, man, this was pretty. And you know what? He just picks his way through. A hand here. He fights off an arm tackle there and then breaks it outside. Oh, man, I mean, there's nothing but blue jersey. And he's showing some speed right here, too. Terrific run there by... Jason Foster, who caught a touchdown pass earlier, now has a punt return for a touchdown. Yep. Yet another point added to the board. And we've got 54 on the board for Georgia Southern. They came in averaging 51 a game. They've already exceeded that with 12 and a half minutes remaining. Back with more in just a moment. Football didn't give you enough to chew on today. You can get your NFL fix tomorrow on CSS with Pro Football Weekly. Get exclusive insider information, news reports, in-depth analysis on all the day's biggest NFL matchups. Pro Football Weekly editor Hub Arkush joins NFL Hall of Famer Dan Hampton and radio and television personality Tom Waddle tomorrow at 11.30 Eastern on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. The umpire, Johnny Hibbett, really took a shot during that punt return a few moments ago, and he's been escorted right in the middle of your screen. You'll see it right from uh, the, the player was rolling, and it got his left leg, and he's now had to be escorted from the field, so we're going to play with one official short at this point, but we we'll hope he'll be okay. He was able to walk off a bit under his own power, but they are still continuing to really hit out there. And App State now with possession again after Georgia Southern and what was officially now, folks, a 94-yard punt return that Foster took back to the house a little bit ago, the third longest in conference history, and it is a school record, oh, by the way. They're going to have to readdress some of these officials. The umpire calls holding. He's usually positioned right behind the linebackers defensively and watches for holding and, and uh, clipping and everything else inside. So somebody else is going to have to fill that bill. So everybody will kind of shift a little bit uh, their responsibilities. There's a move right up the middle by number 42 for App State. And that is Kevin Richardson, who's been seeing some work as Alan Atwater has kind of been given the rest of the day off. Uh, Richardson, a freshman from Elizabethtown, North Carolina. He and freshman Trey Elder, the quarterback, both seeing a bit of time now here in the second half with this game so far out of reach. Well, Jerry's looking for some fresh legs and a little spark and try to get on the scoreboard. Ball loose on the ground. Looks like Elder, though, does get it back as he and the center had a little problem on the exchange. Looks like he pulled out a little, a little early. He didn't ride with the center to get the ball. And a tough third and two here now. Third and a couple. Ball at the 34. Clock continuing to tick at 11 and a half minutes remaining. Folks on the far side leading the nation in receptions coming in. A tough day with just four catches to this point. The gives up the middle. He continues to churn there, but Kevin Richardson's going to be stopped short of the first down. It does not appear that he got anywhere close to that. He's going to be stopped short at about the 35-yard line. He needed to get to about the 36. Well, the quickness of that defense. He got hit, and it looked like he was going to make it, but they, two more Georgia Southern players came in from nowhere and hit him. They're really quick defensively, Warren. Wes Herlocker. I don't know if there's been a guy uh, who's been worked more today 
than the punter for App State. He has really... He's had a lot of opportunities. And he's been under a lot of rush here. Now he does have the wind with him. Let's see if he gets a little better. And it's still high and wobbly and off to the left side. It does take a huge App State bounce inside the 20-yard line. Georgia Southern with 54 on the board and 10 and a half minutes to do some more. We'll see what happens when we come back. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Welcome back, everybody. The Eagles up 54-0. Let's get a status report on that injury to the umpire earlier just a bit ago during that punt return. Ted Byrne. Well, Warren, they, what they've done is they put a knee brace on him. They thought maybe he might have uh, damaged his ACL. Paul Collins was sitting on the bench next to him, and somebody said, hey, Paul, tell him it could be worse. He said, yeah, it could be a lot worse. But the, riff, the umpire is now up and walking around with a big knee brace on. In fact, he has gone back into the game. Playing hurt there is the umpire, Johnny Hibbett, and uh, they've put him in a brace, and... Uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, let him continue in the game, but I'll tell you, his mobility is pretty limited, and you see him kind of hobbling up to the uh, line of scrimmage there, but you're right. That is a key point there, a key place there. Now, most officials would tell you all, and all officials are key, but uh, his, you know, positioning on the field, as you mentioned earlier, is uh, significant. You need to get the quickest officials in that umpire position. He sent the back judge back to where he came. The back judge was filling in for him. Mm -hmm. He sent him back, and he's, uh, he's a tough guy. He's a gamer. Georgia Southern back on offense again, and once again, it's going to be their uh, backup quarterback, and he's got quite a bit of play here already in this second half. Trey Hunter, one touchdown already rushing, and he's pretty much led the way since, so oh, about five minutes or so into the third quarter here in the second half. Georgia Southern, this year at home, has outscored its opponents 224 to 31. I mean, when you That's, come into uh, Statesboro, those numbers are awesome. That's just they, phenomenal. They uh, fumbled the first exchange here the, uh, on the handoff, and the second down got nothing. It's third and long. Hunter looking downfield, throwing across the middle. It's intercepted. App State with the INT there, and Zod Kelly comes up, the junior out of Miami, Florida, with the intercept. And that's the first bit of positive news that App State defense has had to kind of stand up and shout about today. It might be the only second time in this game they be on, went beyond the 50. Looked like he may have tried to force this into some coverage here, huh, Walt? He was throwing it into right there, double coverage. Two Appalachian State people right there. Trying to make something happen. So... We'll see if uh, App State can take advantage of this opportunity with the ball there on the 39. And this is about the second time they've been that far in the territory of Georgia Southern all afternoon. Elder looking to throw and comes up empty as he tried to find number 14, Brandon Turner from Spartanburg. Georgia Southern came strong off the corner after him, too. He ducked up inside, and uh, he was a little rushed to throw. He was throwing on the run. Elder, uh, also a backup quarterback who has been seeing uh, a good bit of time in this second half when both coaches decided to go with their uh, number two guys and not risk any injury as uh, Richie Williams is having a very tough day trying to solve that defense of Georgia Southern. Second and 10, still at the 29. The shotgun. Elder's gonna keep it. Gets a little bit of positive yardage there, and that falls down at about, though, probably the 27 or so. They're trying to run the speed option there, but he, he didn't pitch the ball, and he had nowhere to go. No misdirection, nothing to freeze the, the linebackers. App State came in, averaging 31 points a game that they were scoring this year. Uh, they were also averaging giving up, though, about that same amount. Jerry Moore's squad coming in 4-2 and 2-0 and 2 and 0 in the conference, well on his way here to its first conference loss of the year and a 54-0 score at the moment. A little confusion there. Look. Elder hit from behind as he threw the ball and applying a lot of pressure there was Georgia Southern's number 97, Thevin Harris. 
I thought for a moment maybe uh, Coach Moore would try to kick a field goal. Sometimes to get something on the board morale-wise, it's good, but he's, he's going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and eight, ball at the 27-yard line. The farthest they've been today is the 16. Elder looking for an opening and throws it into coverage, and it is intercepted at the 10-yard line. Well, Georgia Southern with the intercept there by number nine, Rico Zachary. I think it might have been better to knock that down on fourth down. They've lost about 20 right. yards on that. On that. Hey, you know, a young man gets out there and he sees that ball. He wants yeah. to catch it. I mean, you're coached to catch it. Yeah. And he gets in the stat book now as, a, as, an, Absolutely. as an IT. And we mentioned him right here on CSS, and mom and dad and others yeah, throughout sure the Southeast can say, all right, Rico, there's one for the. The yeah. folks from home. There you go, Rico. I tell you what, you can't fault them for that. Well, that's the other thing too, Walt. As we're inside the eight-minute mark, you know, as much as neither coach, I, I would think, I, I don't know all the history here and whatever about whether or not there's bad blood or anything like that. But I mean, players are coached to play, and it's hard to, to let up and hard sure. to, you know, the intensity. Sure you you want to go out and do what you. I mean, this is the gravy day. This is a day you've waited all week in practice to actually go out and play. And uh, both sides would, uh, regardless of how much you've had a chance to play today, you get in, you're going to go back and do what you can do. Well, there's no question about it. But those coaches respect each other. They've had a long rivalry. It, it, it's the players that hype that stuff up. The coaches, mm -hmm. uh, they respect each other. Well, they also know what it's like to be on the other side. They've been on both time. sides of yeah. it. If you've coached very long, you've been on both sides of it. Turnovers today mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, one turnover just for Georgia Southern, three for App State. Jerry Moore, the uh, 16th year at App State, the winningest coach not only at the school but in Southern Conference history. You know, there's been uh, very, very few penalties today. I mean, there, you're right. So it's a hard fought, hard hitting, but clean football game. And what also points out they're both well coached on fundamentals. Trey Hunter here, six and a half minutes, third and seven. And they keep it on the ground. They ran that play in the first series of the first quarter with much success, but uh, not right now. They're going to have to punt into the wind. We haven't seen the punter for Georgia Southern many times today. Well, Coach Seawag was concerned a little bit about his kicking game, but he he probably pretty happy today. The, the place kicker's done right. well. They've, they've done very well, and, and they've, they've had a couple punts blocked this year. That was his concern. They have had two blocked. Uh, here's Patrick Bolin from Guyton, Georgia. who will get a chance uh, as the backup punter to see what he can do here today. He and Dan Jordan kind of share this duty. See, I'm surprised Appalachian was uh, in a return instead of a block. Ball's going to bounce at about the 45-yard line. We're uh, about six minutes remaining from this one being over. We will take a break as Georgia Southern continues to control things here. Back in just a moment from Statesboro, live from Paulson Stadium. Out continuing to enjoy uh, this homecoming afternoon here in Statesboro. The crowd, at least for Georgia Southern, the App State's crowd has had a tough, tough go of it today as their players trail 54-0. Or it looks like uh, Georgia Southern's substituting almost mm -hmm. an entire defense now. Next week, App State's going to play Wofford. That game will be in Boone. And as we mentioned earlier, Georgia Southern will take on the Citadel. I look for Appalachian to bounce back next week, playing at home on their turf that they're used to in a friendly atmosphere. Uh, Jerry Moore is a good football coach. He didn't win that many games uh, not knowing what to do. He'll, he'll regroup them next week. That, that should be a good game with Wofford. I'd almost think uh, the worst thing that could happen next week almost would be an off week or a bye week because oh, you yeah. really want to get this thing out of your uh, system that, as much as you can. And uh, Getting right back, you know, they'll look at the film over the weekend and then uh, just start preparing for the next opponent. That's really, uh, they have to really start thinking about that because Wofford is a team that also came into this very same stadium not too many weeks ago and was really hurt themselves by uh, this Georgia Southern squad who scored 58 points on Wofford here last month. 54 points already on the board today and it's been primarily uh, the Chaz Williams show early 
as he just racked up impressive numbers for two and a half quarters work. And then it's been more of a mop-up situation for the backup QBs on both sides. Here's Elder trying to find somebody downfield, and he does get a completion there inside the 30-yard line as that ball falls into the hand of number 14, Brandon Turner. And they have hooked up a couple of times now since both have come on the field as Elder is attempting to move this team into the end zone for the first time all day long inside five minutes. There was just a little confusion with that secondary there. They're getting, you know, Appalachian's got a sophisticated passing game, and these guys haven't seen much of it. They're in the secondary. Elder looking to uh, unload it again, and he does to a wide open receiver there who gets it inside the 20, and that is complete to Drew Devine. So, a lot of clean jerseys, as we've said, uh, on both sides of this ball now as both coaches kind of empty their benches here with this game well in hand. And it really has been since uh, probably midway through the second quarter of play. App State threatened one other time when they had the ball at the 16-yard line. This is their furthest penetration since earlier this afternoon. I think the fourth down and a foot long ago mm -hmm. when they threw the pass was mentally... Uh, a really demoralizing thing to happen. Elder down the left side. He's got some running room. Inside the 10-yard line, brought down near the 8. And with four minutes remaining, this is the farthest that App State's been in Georgia Southern Territory since this game began. Wide open gap for him to, uh, to run right there. The receivers ran the secondary off. Contain broke down from the pass rush on the outside. 3.40 remaining in the game. Elder waiting on the signal from the sidelines. The coaches uh, kind of communicate that once they see what the defensive set is. Pass complete, knocked out of bounds to Drew Devine from Belmont, North Carolina. And they're now at about uh, the doorstep of the end zone, maybe knocked out at about the one and a half or two yard line. And I mentioned Chaz Williams a moment ago, and he's without question today's player of the game. And as a presenting sponsor of today's telecast, BB&T will make a donation on behalf of Chaz Williams to the General Scholarship Fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the fund will be distributed among the members of the conference. What a terrific day he has had. Elders pass balls incomplete in the end zone. First and goal, they say it's going to be from the four-yard line. They'll be second and goal now from the four. A flag, on a flag does fall there uh, on the field. We'll see what the, the uh, call is. Personal foul, number 38 defense, late hit. Five-yard penalty will have to distance the goal. Automatic first down. I, I think it was a late push. Uh, a little aggravation there. Right. The F-State guy was pursuing him uh, away from the ball. Been a clean game, really, all no. things considered from a penalty standpoint throughout the day. I, I was watching that. He, he, he did push him after the, the whistle blew, but he didn't, he didn't hit him or clip him. So it'll go half the distance, first and goal now from the two for App State as they continue to try to get on the board. Elder looking to the left corner, and it's complete to... Drew Devine, touchdown, App State. I think that ball was tipped, too, by the, the It did defender, look like yeah. the flight of the ball changed a bit after its release. Went end over end. So the App State fans do get finally a reason to rejoice with 316 on the clock. The pass from Elder to Devine, freshman to a sophomore, and they finally get on the board. Sounded like the Georgia Southern Band over there cheered for this touchdown for Appalachian. Derisive cheer, perhaps, Walt? <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. The point after is good, and it's a 54-7 ball game. App State getting on the board. Ted Byrne, you've been down there for the most part today uh, on the Georgia Southern side. Uh, Give me an idea here of just uh, how good this team is in your mind, having been uh, around this uh, part of the state and close to the school in a couple of uh, areas through the years. Uh, I get the feeling that they really think this team's going to really go deep this year. 
And I'll get to Ted in just a moment here. Uh, All right. I kind of caught him unawares. No, no, no I'm, I'm right here, Warren. Uh, actually, you know, it's funny you should mention, I talked talk to you a little bit about the uh, attitude that uh -huh. uh, they had uh, coming into the season. Uh, a new tradition that started here at Georgia Southern is that they are now getting a group together to meet the buses. Two yellow school buses bring the team over from the dressing room. When they get off the bus today, there's 150 people here to greet them as they get off the bus. And that was a tremendous kind of a welcome. They got the same kind of welcome when Wofford came to town. When Elon played here, there weren't near as many people that met them at the bus. It's all about attitude, all about attitude. And so I think that this team is definitely back. All right, they certainly do seem to be the cream of the crop in the SOCON this year. Let me also tell you that next on CSS, a Mountain West showdown between New Mexico and the Rebels of UNLV is scheduled to be shown today or right along these same CSS stations. Hope you'll kind of pull up a chair and watch that one as well as yet a full Saturday of football is planned right here on Comcast Sports. Georgia Southern. Receiving this kickoff now with just over three minutes for drive, lasting uh, eight plays and going 44 yards for App State's first and only TD of the afternoon. These are tough times to be a coach or a player on the sideline on this, on this kind of score, Warren. Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's just, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is kind of get in an amnesia mode almost, I would think, and just start preparing for the next one because what some coaches say is you don't wet, let one loss create right. two losses right. and then another one. More players now that we haven't seen today uh, into the game, and that's Georgia Southern's number seven, Steve Steele, taking it downfield for a nice game. Yeah, you don't let one loss beat you twice and by that uh, most coaches will use that as a cliche kind of a thing that uh, we don't let that carry over and all of a sudden now we've lost a couple there and the mental psych for a college student he got, he's got to go to class this is some pro football where you just do nothing but football they got to go to class they get they got roommates they got friends on, mm -hmm. on the team and, and they get got to handle it and they got to come back Clock continuing to tick here. Georgia Southern now with its sixth straight victory. And this is something App State now will have to regroup. They've lost twice before this year. They lost in their opening game out in Wyoming and then won a couple and then came back and, and lost and then won a couple. So they've kind of had this kind of ebb and flow to their season this year. Been an up and down season for them so far. Coming around this left corner here is number 14, Trey Hunter, and he's seen most of the quarterbacking duty here in this second half. Uh, Chaz Williams pretty much uh, put this one to bed for himself about uh, four or five minutes into the third quarter, and Hunter's kind of taken him the rest of the way. Well, Coach Seawack's not going to let him throw the ball now either. He, right. He, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do that to have Blatchett State. He, that would be an insult to injury. We had 22,000 plus here on hand for this game this afternoon. A homecoming crowd, fifth largest ever at Paulson Stadium. The 20th year this football stadium's been here with, uh, and it just seems to me, I cannot believe it's been that <laughs> quickly flown by. 20 years of playing games uh -huh. here at this place. Wow, real high tackle there up close, around the neck. A little clothesline tackle there. Again, I don't think that was intentional. That's all he had to grab onto. Mm -hmm. Walt, would you ever foresee the day that uh, Georgia Southern takes it even up Division One status? Well, and, and the, you know, Warren, I, I know what you're going to ask, and there's been a lot of talk about that in recent years. Uh, every time they have a great season, uh -huh. they've outgrown the Southern Conference. Uh -huh. Every time they go to the finals of the playoffs, they've outgrown the Southern Conference. Uh, that'd be a pretty difficult thing to do with the atmosphere right now in the NCAA. And what you have to do, you have to have a 35,000-seat stadium. Okay. You have to increase scholarships to 85. You're going to have to hire three more coaches. I mean, it's you're looking at a, a half a million dollars right up front in, uh, in expenses. This this bowl here, this open end, lends itself to closing it in, and you can probably double deck. Uh, sure. One of these sides. Well, appreciating all that you have is what is 
is, is, is so tough to do. Sometimes people see what they have and then they want a little bit more. And, and this is a very special place for college football at this level right now. And the Division I AA status that they enjoy and what they've built here through uh, the last couple of decades is something that is the envy of a lot of programs around the country. I'm afraid Coach Seawalk's about to get the ever popular. <laughs> I hope it's a flavor he likes. Oh, well, it's, uh, one thing is guaranteed. It's going to be cold. And I've seen some guys kind of huddling behind him with the clock now at 15 seconds. And, oh, there it just went on top of him. In the meantime, and meantime play continues. Play. We're, I know. We're I was doing play-by-play play on something else there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Five seconds remaining, and the clock ticks off. And Coach Seawalk will make his way there as he continues to enjoy this season after their sixth consecutive win here today, 54-7 to over App State. He and Jerry Moore making their way towards midfield. Tough, tough loss for App State as they just were manhandled here this afternoon. And Georgia Southern continues to roll, coming in as advertised, scoring 51 on average this year. They scored more than that today in putting this 54-7 victory on the board against App State. We'll come back with one uh, final thought here in a moment, live from Statesboro, as we continue on CSS with Southern Conference football, back with the final wrap in just a moment. And welcome back again, everybody. Georgia Southern over App State, 54 to seven today before the fifth largest crowd in school history, 22,000 plus on this homecoming day to watch Georgia Southern's most ever points against App State. Walt, we uh, thought it would be a lot closer. We thought the other Williams might have as good or better a day well, throwing the football. So often, Warren, that you hype a game that we really thought would be a shootout, like 42 to 35. Mm -hmm. Turns out like this, either low scoring or one a lopsided one, uh, high score by the other team. But what a great atmosphere for college football, played in a proper perspective. Play on a college campus where it belongs with students and, and coaches and everybody who are mm -hmm. close to each other. I think it's a great atmosphere for college football. Well, it's been a good Southern Conference victory here for Georgia Southern as they seize top place in the league. You can catch a Mountain West showdown just uh, around the corner now. New Mexico and the Rebels of UNLV set to come up here along your CSS sports stations. We thank you for watching this afternoon. Georgia Southern with 54 points on the board as they continue to lead the nation in scoring. For Walt Nadzak and Ted Byrne, I'm Warren Pepper. We thank you for watching this afternoon. You've been watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Have a good weekend. Goodbye, everybody.